Good morning, everybody. This is the Life Market Open for June 23rd. It's Thursday, and it's not like any other day. It's the day of the EU referendum in the UK. Uh, today we're going to focus on this, not only on this, but uh, we're going to talk a lot about these topics. I'm Yochail, I'm Forex French and Market Movers Podcast, doing this show as usual for FX Street. So, uh, today we'll cover, of course, recent developments, mostly about the referendum, as it's sometimes called, uh, charts and levels, the next 24 hours, which are said to see an explosion, and, of course, your questions. Uh, so, if you cannot see the chat box alongside the screen, please go to the address here, tlk.io slash fx street hyphen forex hyphen live hyphen video. Okay, let's uh, begin. Uh, where do we stand in terms of the British referendum? First of all, polls have opened about one hour ago. The markets have opened now uh, relatively calm. Uh, let's take a look. Um, before we continue with other topics, so this is a euro dollar, a bit higher, also pound dollar, well, slipping from the highs, but all in all, we're looking in good shape. So the current uh, situation in market is that um, we had two polls. Uh, we had four polls, actually, last night. Uh, two of them were mixed in the afternoon, and it sort of weighed on the pound, kept it a bit pressured in range. But then at night, uh, late, I mean, in the European session, after the uh, U.S. closed as well, uh, we had um, um, two polls from Commerce and YouGov, and they showed a better picture for uh, the United States, uh, sorry, for the <coughs> U.K., and they showed, Commerce showed 48% for Remain against 42%. Last time it was just a dead uh, heat. And also YouGov decided not to tell us how many are really undecided and told us that it's 51% uh, for uh, Remain and 48, 49 for, uh, for Leave. This is, of course, good news for the pound. Markets prefer that the UK remains in uh, the EU. Okay, morning, everybody. Uh, so, if we look at the sort of the bigger picture of the Brexit trackers, the various, um, various um, sort of aggregators, we have the we have the uh, Financial Times Brexit tracker shifting from just yesterday morning 44 against 43 for Leave to 47 against 45 uh, for Remain. Okay, so that also helps the pound. Uh, the, what's called the poll of polls by, um, I forgot his name at the moment. Anyway, it shows 50-50, okay, it takes the uh, last uh, polls, and it shows a dead heat of 50-50. And the number cruncher, Matt Singh, which had a good prediction for the general elections, um, uh, he uh, leans for Maine, sees a higher chance for Maine. Um, my personal opinion is that we'll, we'll have a very narrow margin for remain sorry for that let me just get you the uh, last okay this is number cruncher politics uh, showing a higher chance of remain you see 63 percent chance of remain and the uh, central projection is 52 percent uh, to vote for remain 48 against okay and uh, this is the ft's bricks tracker as i said 47 against 45 and one more here, the poll of polls, yeah, from a company called What the UK Thinks. This shows 50-50, okay? So these are the things I'm uh, following. Hi, Jax. Yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, missed you guys. And um, yeah, I'll be also here tomorrow for the day after, maybe with very red eyes, but uh, we'll cover the aftermath, of course. Okay, so all in all, it's... Uh, there was some shift for Remain, but it's very, very close. All these polls are sort of in the margin of error. Um, let me just uh, take another, before we dive into the next topics, uh, just a quick reminder of what we had so far. So um, there was, since February, the campaign is basically going on since February, since the referendum was announced, since UK PM David Cameron reached an agreement with um, with the EU and some changes. Uh, all in all, there was a lead most of the time for the Remain campaign of about five to six points. Things changed late in May. We had a surge in the support for Leave, okay? Uh, the Leave campaign brought better speakers and talked more about immigration, less about economics, 
and it worked out for them. At some point, we reached a 5% lead for leave. The change began uh, last week. It already began before the murder of uh, a member of parliament, Joe Cox, very tragic killing on Thursday. Uh, it was a political murder. She was murdered because of her pro-immigrant, pro-remain opinions. The man was perhaps a bit also mentally ill, but his motives were, were political. Anyway, that, uh, that sort of lowered uh, the rhetoric of the campaign, and we had more support for, for Remain, less for Relief, but anyway, it just balanced things out, and recent days saw polls more or less very, very balanced. So why do I think, and many others think that, like the number cruncher, Matt Singh, think that there's um, yeah, a very sad event. Uh, the UK doesn't have so much political violence, so it's, uh, it was quite a shock, I think, for everybody. And the campaigns were paused for a few days. Um, why do I think, and many others think, that despite polls showing a dead heat, we'll have a small victory for Remain? Um, the general notion, based on the recent past from the elections in Scotland, the referendum there, and the general elections, is that the undecided the one that are on the fence until the last moment um, will eventually decide to stick with the devil they know, not with uh, uncertainty, okay? So we've seen that in the past, we can see this again. I expect this to be very, very narrow, okay? Uh, leaving open wounds, meaning that other countries will also want the referendums, that uh, British uh, politics will, be, will still be a mess with many people calling for David Cameron to resign or or things like that, and uh, I mean, it, it, it's a big shakeup, but uh, not a big shock like uh, a leave, okay? Um, yeah, so good morning, everybody. Um, but you never know, it's harder to understand uh, the referendum, uh, well, because it's a once in a lifetime event and not like general elections where there's lots of experience with polling, it doesn't mean that polling doesn't go wrong, okay? So we talked about, uh, uh, yeah, one important point here. So we have a small expectation for Remain to win, but um, this doesn't mean that, uh, th this means that the risk is a bit asymmetrical, okay? So this means, we'll dive into this soon, but that if we have a victory for Remain, it's going to be positive for the pound, positive for the euro, bad for the safe haven yen, and also for the US dollar, more risk on. But the reaction could be relatively limited in comparison to what happens if we have a Brexit, if we have even a small majority for leaving, okay? That will be a much bigger shock, a big fall of the pound for the, uh, the euro, and a big rise for the safe haven dollar in the end. Um, remember, it's not that... Uh, England falls off a cliff in the day after, okay? Uh, there's probably going to be a two-year process and new negotiations, and you never know, but it's anyway, it's lots of uncertainty. Markets hate uncertainty, and the status quo is good for, I mean, is perceived as better for markets, okay? So uh, that's why uh, it's going to have uh, a bigger uh, a bigger move, okay? Let's continue uh, with... Uh, this okay so let's go back to the slides as I said remain if we have a, a vote to remain unless it's 55% to 45% I mean a really big decisive victory that leaves all the skeptics um, shocked uh, assuming we have a small majority for remain I think we'll have a short-lived rally perhaps even a buy the rumor sell the fact tomorrow morning if we have uh, Brexit, I think it's a big fall. Perhaps we'll have also a significant bounce uh, afterwards because uh, you no know, markets tend to exaggerate in both directions. But then the bigger picture is very negative. So this is the um, this is the voting this is the voting uh, note. Okay, that's the question that Brits face: uh, Should the United Kingdom remain a member of the European Union or leave the European Union? Okay, two options there. So now let's talk about uh, how I see currencies in case of Remain. Let's just look at them before we um, uh, before we dive into this. So current levels currently, um, pound dollar is at 147.55 cable. We already reached new highs last night in the 
within hours of Friday, we reached 148.40, okay? So we're relatively at high levels because of the bounce back for Remain, okay? So currently we're at the highest levels since December, basically the highest levels for 2016. We already almost touched 140 and that political murder sent the pound much higher and then another weekend gap as, as polls um, uh, improved afterwards, okay? Uh, so relatively stable this morning, this will totally change undoubtedly, okay? Uh, next level to watch is the wrong number of 150 and uh, then we can perhaps add more lines um, to the top side. I don't think we'll have a big move to the top side on a remain. I mean, perhaps a big move, but not a sustained one, okay? So the next levels to watch here are 152.40 and 155, sort of the big levels. And 150, of course, is a very round number. They also worked as support. Okay, these are the big levels on the upside. These levels were last seen uh, in 2015. On the downside, if we go back to the one hour chart, we have um, 146.50 as support, 145.80, um, and then uh, 144.40. But in case we have a Brexit, these levels become irrelevant. I think we'll fall quickly under 140 and even quicker, perhaps under 135. Okay, so key level to watch on the downside, 138.30, which was the low uh, this year. and the, lowest since 2009. The next line to watch is the 135 line, which is the post-crisis low from 2009, and then the round number of 130. Um, well, moving to Euro dollar, currently around the previous uh, resistance line of 133, 113.35, uh, uh, high resistance 114.10, quite weak, then 146, 114.60, sorry, uh, is strong resistance. It used to be a very strong line in 2015 and also in 2014. It's followed by 116.16, the high of this year, and then 117.12, the high of 2000, um, 2015. On the downside, we have um, 111.30, which was the swing low, then the round number of 110. 108.20 uh, is a double bottom right here, and Draghi pushed it down and then back up. And then 107.10 and then 104.60, the lowest level since, the lowest in 2015 and also the lowest in a decade, okay? So these are the levels to watch on, uh, on your dollar, okay? Dollar yen has wow, lost so much ground in uh, recent weeks. Markets are basically defying the Bank of Japan. We dipped under 104. 103.50 is the first line of support. Remember, the yen is a safe haven, so in case of a Brexit, it, dollar yen will fall, the yen will strengthen. Uh, then it's followed, the round number of 100 is eyed. That could be also a level where the Bank of Japan intervenes, okay? We know that they're on high alert. On the top side, we have 105.50 and 106.10, followed by 107.65. Currently, let's go back to the hourly chart. We're on very stable ground. Here under 105, very, I mean, we had a jump, weekend gap because polls were looking better and then very, very stable. And in general, markets are are waiting. Uh, yeah. A uh, question here from Jake. What time do polls get released? We'll reach that in a few more minutes, okay? Uh, we'll have exact timing, including key counties to watch. Okay, so don't worry. We'll get into detail about that as well. I want to cover the main currencies at least. Um, dollar CAD, um, yeah, uh, 127.50 is, is support, used to be a strong line of support, 126.30 below, uh, 128, 30, 129, and 130 are levels to watch on the top side. Uh, Aussie, 75.33 at the moment, 76, 76.40, and 77.40 are on the top side, uh, 75 and uh, 73, 75, 73 are on the downside, okay? Kiwi dollar, uh, currently at 72, moving on up, looking good for good reasons. Um, yeah, 75 is the next big level. 70.50 used to be double top and it's strong support. Dollar Swiss, the Swiss franc could also become interesting as a safe haven currency, but the Swiss National Bank can intervene. Currently just under 96, 95.50 uh, is support, 96.40 is resistance. Things can go wild here in all directions. Uh, 
uh, Euro Swiss did fall in the past uh, few weeks or so. 108.63, 107.60 for me the line in the sand. I mean, what used to be the line in the sand for this uh, Swiss National Bank uh, a few months ago. 105 is the next level to watch. 110 is on the top side. Euro pound could become very interesting. I see the pair, this cross not moving too much. I mean, the pound will fall more than the euro in case of Brexit and the pound will rise more than the euro in case of uh, Remain, but the euro's fate is tied with the pound, with uh, uh, membership, ongoing membership of the uh, UK in the EU. Anyway, 77.40, 78.30, 79.30 and 80.20 are lines on the top side, uh, 75.60 uh, and uh, 76.50, 75.60 and uh, 7440 are on the downside, okay? Euro yen, we fell quite a lot here, mostly because of the strength of the yen. So 115.50 is strong, it was a strong line of support. Um, the yen is a safe haven, the euro is carried away, so we'll certainly see movements here. 121 is resistance. Uh, 154, uh, 20 is the level we're currently seeing on pound dollar. Um, the Gepi, the Dragon, we could see extreme moves here. This is the clear uh, sort of risk-on, risk-off pair. Uh, going across 155, 80 is on the top side, followed by 158, 160, 162, 50, and 163, 80. On the downside, we have 150, uh, 147, and 145, 50. Okay? Also, it's worth mentioning oil prices hugging 50. But in case of a remain, they'll go up. In case of Brexit, they will go down. Uh, 50, 50, under 52 was the high. Somewhere here, 51, 67, uh, 45 is sort of a key line on the downside, then followed by 40. Okay, so we covered charts. Uh, your questions about other charts, various crosses, pound crosses, yen crosses, whatever, are, of course, welcome. Okay. Um, now, before we answer Jake's question about the polls, one mentioned the asymmetric levels, and these are the levels I think we'll have in case of remain. So again, again in case that we have the UK remaining in the EU, I believe that uh, we'll have a move to the upside, okay? Um, that means the pound will rally, uh, but then after the dust settles, we could have it sort of a buy the rumor, sell the fact. A buy the rumor, sell the fact could come as early as the European session tomorrow morning. I mean, if we have during the Asian session, during the night, a clear victory for Remain, unless it's a huge, huge victory. But if it's a small victory, I mean, we'll, we'll probably have a rally during the Asian session and perhaps a, um, a sell the fact already in the European session. The sell the fact could also wait for Monday or Tuesday. Anyway, <clears throat> the levels that I see, 150, 152 maybe, Remember that in such cases of big, big, huge events, we could have limited, um, uh, sorry, uh, we could have, um, I mean, technical lines can be broken. I mean, I did talk about those technical lines, but uh, during the thin liquidity and madness of the reaction, uh, we could have weird moves. Euro dollar, watch 114.60. I believe it will be broken in case of remain. Perhaps even will reach 116.16 or even above that. But I believe that we could uh, settle then back around 114.60. The question, will we settle above this line or below this line? Um, remember, we have also elections in Spain over the weekend. Uh, dollar again, watch 105.50. Again, uh, this is sort of the first hurdle. If we settle above this line, it's... Uh, Maybe we have more room to the upside, but if the pair just uh, jumps above this line but then falls back down, it means that it's still risk off. Dollar CAD 127.50, 126.30 are the levels to watch. Aussie dollar, well, maybe I should update this because we're seeing higher levels. 76 first resistance, 77.40, and perhaps maybe we'll add 78.40. I know that many traders like the Aussie dollar, and for good reasons. For the Kiwi dollar, 72.50, maybe 73 could be reached. Again, in all currencies, I see a risk on move, which is bad for the dollar and even worse for the yen, good for all the other currencies led by the pound and the euro, but not a very, very sustained move. In case of a Brexit, well, 
Um, I think we'll have a huge crash, a pound plunge. Um, as I said, 138.30 the low for 2016, uh, 135 the 2009 low, but I believe that 130 could be seen very, very soon. And we could have a violent big bounce all the way. For example, we could dip under 130 and jump all the way to 135. Okay, 500 pips bounce, it's something that cannot be ruled out, but then another fall and a gradual slide towards maybe 120 or something like that. It's a big, big disaster for the pound, I believe. Euro dollar could easily slip under 110. Let's see if it falls under 108.20, then 107.10. Also here, we could have a violent reaction a recovery before another slide to the downside. The events uh, will be shadowed by, the, I mean, in, in the moves will be strongest in the pound, then followed by the euro. Then the other is dollar yen, the ultimate safe haven the Japanese yen could fall under 100, and then we could have the Bank of Japan intervene, probably without coordination from other central banks, okay? We might have coordination from countries to release a statement to call markets, more liquidity from the Bank of England, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, but I don't think many countries will help uh, Japan uh, push down the yen. I think they will intervene on their own, which means that their chances of succeeding will be limited or, or at least short lift okay dollar cad levels to watch on a brexit together with the falling oil prices 133.10 and 135 aussie dollar uh, 71.40 and 70 and kiwi dollar will easily slip under 70 okay these are my projections remember it's a crazy event thin liquidity it's also important to note trade very <laughs> carefully uh don't use high leverage this is a huge huge event it's not the S and bomb, which was was a bomb, which was a surprise. It's a planned event, okay? We've been talking about this for months, but remember, uh, trade with limit, limited leverage, and in most cases, your broker will already <laughs> limit you, okay? I have an article on Forex Crunch about uh, updates from 41 brokers who changed their regulations. Some stopped trading, uh, well, in the rare cases altogether. Most of them just limited leverage. Uh, not only the pound but also the euro and they're ready to take more action so really trade with care especially in case of a brexit okay um now to the schedule the timetable to answer jake's question um so polls are released at nine uh, gmt all the times here are gmt okay so that's 10 in the uk that's when all elections uh, close and <clears throat> if you're here in the old continent that uh, is 11 p.m. okay okay it's just to make clear on the, on the slide now and this time <clears throat> now uh, during the day we already have polls are already closed uh, sorry polls are already open that means <clears throat> sorry voting is already open that means that no opinion polls are allowed okay uh, but after voting is closed, usually we have exit polls. Usually we have, what are exit polls? Exit polls are when people um, at some selected polling voting stations are asked after they vote to uh, cast their ballot in this special ballot box to cast their vote, uh, organized by TV stations or things like that. And they're asked to repeat their vote. Then this data is collected, usually, uh, well, before uh, voting, actually ends and just when voting ends the tv stations release their uh projections according to exit polls exit polls are usually very large scale okay in comparison to regular opinion polls we do not have exit polls at the moment okay we only have uh, by sky and yougov we have sort of the this company yougov is going to publish on sky and maybe other companies as well sort of they're asking again the same people that they interviewed what they actually voted on election day. Um, it may be other new people as well, I'm not so sure, but anyway, this is sort of election day opinion poll. Again, it's limited to 1,000, 2,000 votes like all the other opinion polls, it's not an exit poll, but it's sort of the first indication. We could have the big, first initial big swings at this moment. Secondly, as I mentioned here, there are lots of rumors, I assume they are true, because uh, we've heard this for a long time, that various hedge funds are um, organizing 
uh, exit poles on their own, okay, not the TV stations, and they'll have the initial information that will not be made public. But nothing ever stays public. First of all, we'll see action in markets. And, and secondly, I'm sure we'll have lots of rumors on Twitter. I would listen to these rumors very carefully, uh, but cautiously with lots of salt, <laughs> grains of salt, because it's um, it can be lots of misleading, false information, uh, and not uh, something we can fully, fully trust, okay? But we'll see lots of action at 9 GMT, okay? But then we'll have to wait between two to two hours until real results are in. And this is when the second wave of big action begins. So at 11.30 GMT, uh, perhaps a few minutes earlier, I'm not sure, but at least not before 11, we'll have the first two areas releasing their reports, okay? One is called Wandsworth. Uh, I never heard of that area before. I'm sure there are nice people there, but it's not a county I'm familiar with in England. Anyway, uh, according to data obtained by, researched by the University of Bristol, analyzed by JP Morgan and published on The Guardian, um, they are expected to vote Remain around 70%. This means that if in Wandsworth we have 80% for Remain, or, or anyway, something above 70%, it's good news for the Remain campaign. If we have under 70%, it's bad news. It's been good news for the Leaf campaign. Same thing goes for Sunderland, but the other way around. Sunderland is expected to vote Leave with the majority about 56 to 43 percent, something like that. If it's if it's neck to neck in Sunderland, if I mean less than uh, no lead for Leave, then it's good news for Remain. If it's more than 56 percent, it's uh, good news for Leave. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so that begins answering Jake's question. I see a question by GM, good morning, or uh, which said beforehand, no Brexit. CIA is big on Twitter, covered uh, access for misinformation. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, there's lots of noise, remember, with these big events and very thin liquidity as well. Not only because it's a big event, but because these are the early hours of Asia, especially when polls are closing, it's when Tokyo is still closed, only Australia is open. When the rest of the results were released, Tokyo is already open, okay? When, when, when real results are released, okay? Um, so these are the first two areas to report. They might also show mixed results. I mean, one area it will, could be better than expected for remain, the other better than expected for leave. It could be messy. Just 15 minutes later, we're expecting, again, these are not exact times, but projected times, the city of London, and there we're expecting a majority for Maine, around 65%, okay? Uh, so these are the first indications. We might have huge swings on these real results, okay? Then from about midnight GMT, we'll have a big flow of results leading up to three GMT, okay? So, uh, here are a few areas, uh, got the information from The Guardian, of places where the vote is expected to be very, very finely balanced, okay? Very neck-to-neck, um, 50-50. -neck uh, areas, especially in Wales, Wrexham, Carrefilly, and uh, perhaps more, uh, more importantly, Lancaster, which is already a city, not a small town. Um, they're expected to stand at 50-50. Rexham at 1, Carefilly, um, perhaps butchering the name, at 1.30, and Lancaster at 2. Uh, if they all lean towards one direction, I mean, show more than 50% for leave, uh, the pound could fall badly, and if they show to the other direction uh, for remain, the pound could rally, okay? These are not the only places. I mean, we have a big bulk of results. Uh, but these are sort of the bellwethers, the areas that are expected to be the most uh, most balanced, okay? At 3 GMT, we have a big bulk of results. I think 88 areas are reporting. And the BBC expects to provide a projection, to have a call to say, okay, relieve one, uh, remain one, or something like that, okay? But if it's too close, the BBC and other news organizations, Sky ITV, uh, international ones as well, not only UK ones, of course, <clears throat> Sorry for that. Um, they might sus I mean, suspend their call because it's too close to call. By 4 GMT, 90% already will have reported 
the results, if we don't have it at three GMT, we should have it by four. Uh, but if it's so close, we'll, we won't have a results still, okay? At six GMT, we are expecting the last results. The last areas to report are mostly rural areas more leaning towards leave, okay? So uh, if Remain has a small lead, a very minor lead towards six uh, GMT, it could still change in the other direction, okay? If leave has a lead, um, a minor one, it could strengthen, okay? According, again, to historical data we have, but this is a big, big event and perhaps not the best one to uh, analyze. Okay, so this answers the big question, I mean, in detail about the full schedule for today. Maybe we, well, we'll have a wrap up and repeat everything, um, but uh, let's, let's cover this quickly. Again, 9 GMT, that's 10 in the UK, 11 here in the old continent, polls are closing, and we'll have election day polls, not exit polls, okay? You might have hedge fund exit polls, rumors, misinformation, real information, lots of mess, very thin liquidity. From uh, 11.30 GMT, or perhaps a few minutes earlier, we'll have the first two counties to release their uh, results. One is expected to show a big lead for le uh, leaves, the other for remain. Okay, Wandsworth, if they show better than expected uh, for one camp, um, then it could be significant. They might also be very, very mixed. Then the city of London, and then big flow of results uh, from midnight GMT to three GMT, the big bulk of results with Wrexham, Carafilly, and Lancaster spread out there to provide us bellwethers. Three GMT, big bulk of results. We might have a projection there in the middle of the Tokyo session with already normal liquidity, I would say. Um, at four GMT, 90% will have reported, and then the last reports are due at 6 GMT when the Leave campaign uh, could get more votes than the Remain campaign in the last uh, areas to report, okay? At 7 GMT, we, which is 8 in the UK or 9 here in the Old Continent, we will be back with another show with the aftermath at the wake of the London session. As I said, if we have a clear result for Remain, uh, early on, we'll have big gains for the pound, but we might have uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact, because pound dollar is more, or markets are more positioned for remain at the moment, okay? Why? Because recent polls did show a small return of the remain camp to uh, more gains, and more importantly, because people expect the undecided to vote for, uh, to vote for, uh, remain, stick with the devil, they know. Then we might have a buy the rumor, sell the fact. If we will have a Brexit, and we'll have a fall of the pound, again, per perhaps a violent uh, recovery, and then ongoing weakness, ongoing risk off for quite some time. We might have resignation of UKPM, David Cameron, other countries wanting uh, to vote as well. Uh, uh, I, it wouldn't be an exaggeration even to say that with the fragile global economy at the moment, with China slowing down, with Europe still being the sick man of the world, with the US recovery also a bit uh, uh, struggling, as we've seen in the last jobs report, this this event could push the world into a recession. Uh, I mean, if we have a Brexit, that means no Fed hike, not this year and probably not next year. Um, even if we don't have a Brexit, the wounds are still open. I would expect markets to, I mean, if we ever remain, to return back to normal in a few more days, but the uh, problems of the European Union, uh, uh, the divisions in UK politics, and in general, I will continue uh, moving back and forth from the back burner to the front burner. And uh, yeah, unless we have really a huge 55 or against 45 or more victory for remain, uh, and that's also not guaranteed that uh, these issues will go away anytime soon. Okay. Um, what else did I prepare for you? Yeah, so that's the main event. Uh, let's talk about a few few more other things. We didn't have the show for around uh, two weeks. Uh, key events we had in markets before we reach the wrap up. Okay. Um, we had uh, Dovish Fed last week. 
markets uh, reacted, but not too much because we are obsessed currently with Brexit, okay? Brexit or Remain. Uh, so the Fed was dovish. Of course, they did not raise rates. They did um, warn, I mean, they uh, did show, they said that the jobs report was perhaps only a one-off. You can't make policy according to one report, but they did sound very, very worried. So now employment is more uh, worrisome than inflation, perhaps. Uh, anyway, they didn't totally cut the dot plot for 2016. Still officially maybe two hikes, but probably not. If we have a remain, I mean a vote to remain and a good jobs report, perhaps we'll even have a hike in July, but the chances are falling by the day and then another one in December after the elections. As I said, if we have a Brexit, forget about rate hikes in the US. Okay, another topic. We had Draghi speaking this week. The ECB is ready to act as a contingency to a Brexit, but also to add more stimulus uh, to the European economies. I'm not sure they really have new bonds to buy, but they began with corporate bonds, and they will certainly not want to see a strong euro. Uh, so they might become creative. The Bank of Japan um, could be on the verge of helicopter money. They'll wait for two things. First of all, the vote today, and then an election to the upper house in early July in Japan. Uh, but look, Japan's debt to GDP ratio is worse than than the one in Greece, okay? But most of the debt is held by the Bank of Japan and, and Japanese citizens. Uh, this debt cannot be repaid, especially as they have deficits, ongoing deficits. They might announce, Japan has always been in the forefront, they might announce bigger uh, measures, maybe to monetize the debt, and that could really kill the yen, which is strengthening too much. Um, another topic we talked about a lot in the past few months is oil prices. We did see them rise uh, above fifty dollars. Uh, we have um, we had uh, production disruptions in Canada. Okay, we had um, that's because of the wildfires. We had production disruptions in Nigeria because of the rebellion there. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Saudi Arabia is pumping at full capacity. Russia as well, and the United States after many months or weeks of falling production, production is on the rise once again. Uh, currently, oil prices move only by Brexit, but uh, I see limited gains for um, oil uh, in general. Another thing to watch uh, is watch for the events nobody is watching out for, uh, because everybody's focused with Brexit, not only in the financial media, not only in the UK, not only in Europe, also in the United States, uh, the United States is watching, China is watching, everybody's watching. As I said, it could be the, um, not the strive, in the st but the stick that breaks, it pushes the world into a recession. Uh, and it's, it's truly a big event, but anything uh, can be sneaked in now. Just a small reminder from 2008 and the day that uh, the Beijing Olympics began with the opening ceremony. It was very nice in August 2008. Russia and Georgia began their war. I won't get into who's to blame, but anyway, uh, it was on the day that the Olympics began uh, when all the world was watching the beautiful ceremony. Uh, so things like that uh, can happen and pass under the radar. The dovishness of the Fed last week passed under the radar. It did hit the dollar a bit, but then once again, the opinion polls <laughs> from the UK began hitting again and again. Okay, uh, do you have any questions? I wanted to, um, let me try to find here. I had, FX Street has a special, uh, I didn't, oh, here it is. Okay, so this is not the only show about the uh, Brexit, the Eurofrendum, okay? Here is the full schedule from FX Street. Um, so yesterday we already had one event. Uh, today we have uh, uh, Joseph uh, Trevisani at 3 GMT, Mark De La Paz at 11 GMT, Phil Carr at 12 GMT, Rob uh, Colville at 1 GMT, and David Pickler, uh, if I'm saying this name correctly, at 2 GMT. I'll be back tomorrow in the aftermath, in the hangover, whatever you want to call it, uh, UK re referendum analysis. 
uh, we're next for the British pound, but really not only the British pound, but all markets um, at 7 GMT, exactly the same time like today. Okay. And then also after me, we have uh, immediately uh, Dr. Sivarman at 8 GMT, the spike trade calls. And uh, next week on June 28th, uh, Steve Roughly after the Brexit outlook. Of course, there are other um, uh, other webinars on uh, FX Street, other live events, but these are the ones related to the Brexit from the um, page on the FX Street blog, the vote. Yeah, FX Street's coverage, okay? Um, what else can I say before we reach the wrap up? Um, let's take another look at markets. I'm sure I had another thing to mention. At the moment, we aren't seeing any big movements, okay? Um, remember, voting is underway. Uh, uh, yeah, another comment, yeah, forgot to say about turnout, okay? I looked at, uh, okay, UK papers are not allowed to publish new polls. And and they're not allowed to do any campaigning as well. So I mean, in the last moment, but they can report, of course, about the turnout and the weather. So apparently, it's been raining quite heavily in the southeast of England. That includes London, and that could perhaps affect the turnout. But two things: first of all, it always rains in Britain. <laughs> well, not always, but that's that's typical. I mean, I, I don't think it'll change the turnout. Secondly, we don't know how the turnout can affect voters. We do know two things. We know that younger people tend to vote for Remain and older people for Leave, okay? And we also know that uh, more educated people lean for Remain and less uh, educated for Leave, rural for uh, Leave, uh, urban for Remain. Who uh, is more affected by the rain? I don't think anybody think uh, people that that live in London, I mean, live in the UK, it just rains, I mean, a lot, and, and life goes on. So, um, yeah, Ramon says, London rain continues. Yeah, uh, it'll it probably rain a few days, well, I mean, yesterday, I don't know, but it'll rain tomorrow. Uh, I know that when uh, Brits or and, uh, people from Ireland want to plan uh, um, going out, uh, going outdoors, they can't, they don't postpone it in the last moment because it rains, uh, because if they'll postpone it, they might never go out on that walk, on that hike. Okay, very different from where I live here in Spain and in Barcelona. If it rains this weekend, it probably won't rain next weekend, so why go out in the rain? Anyway, I think turnout will be very high. Um, then, and I don't know what it means because uh, there is enthusiasm in both camps, okay? So turnout is interesting. I don't think it can. Uh, I mean, maybe we'll see jitters during the day because of the turnout, but I, I cannot say, OK, turnout means more leave or more remain. I really I looked at various uh, experts analysis, and I can't say it really makes a difference. OK, so these are the reports we'll get today. We'll get also pictures of politicians voting. But no, uh, probably no big statements. The big statements, the campaign end, ended yesterday. Um, remember, um, yeah, okay. Uh, any more questions? I'll just say that uh, markets are higher this morning in Europe. Again, the last, last polls released last night showed. Um, tendency towards remain. Again, we had four polls. Two of them showed very neck to neck, but this last two were more promising. I can mention a few events today. We have the Eurozone PMIs, uh, purchasing managers indices. They're worse than expected. Again, markets will not react to this because of the um, EU obsession, EU referendum obsession. Um, but as you can see here from the FX Street calendar on Forex Crunch, most of the numbers missed expectations. Okay, so it's not good news for the old continent. We also have uh, ongoing targeted LTRO from the ECB. It began already yesterday and didn't have any effect. Of course, the EU referendum also appears here on the chart. 
Um, as usual, on Thursday, we have initial jobless claims in the US. It's been very stable, expected to stand at 270,000. Okay, that's a 12.30 GMT, shouldn't have a big effect. Um, another thing to watch is the market manufacturing PMI, expected to remain more or less unchanged. It's very, very low growth, 50.8 points. Could have an impact, not today, I mean, once markets, um, uh, once the dust settles. New home sales at the two GMT, uh, four here in the old continent. Remember, the FX Street calendar is adjusted to your time zone, uh, expected to slide from the highs of 619,000 uh, annualized to 560,000. Usually it has an impact on markets, but probably not today. Okay. And for tomorrow, maybe worth mentioning, yeah, the EFO business climate, it'll feed into the Euro once uh, the dust settles. Okay, if we have a, a vote to remain, the impact from the EFO perhaps will be felt next week, not tomorrow. Usually it's a key, a top tier event for Germany for the Eurozone. That's at eight uh, GMT and it's expected to remain more or less unchanged. And tomorrow, usually also top tier event from the US, Durable goods orders expected to slide just a bit on the headline. Uh, and then the uh, consumer confidence in the US, well, it's a revised figure expected to remain mostly unchanged. Remember, in case of a remain, these events will eventually have some kind of an impact um, because they, they are meaningful for the economies, but not today. Okay, any last questions or, well, I'll begin the wrap up uh which is sort of a summary of the uh referendum and then you can have more questions as well so this is the referendum edition of the live market open here is a short video of what you need to know for today for the big event that you are friend in the UK, which is left front and center for markets. Okay, so currently, where do we stand? We had a last minute vote for uh, search for regain for sorry for remain. We had four polls yesterday. The last two were uh, better. Commerce showed 48 against 42 for remain, better than their previous poll, better for the remain camp, and also YouGov um, showed 51 to 41, 49. But so. Uh, uh, a vote to remain is um, is more priced in, not fully priced in, than a vote to leave. If we have a clear vote for remain, it's an asymmetrical risk. Perhaps we'll even have a buy the rumor, sell the fact, a rise of the pound during the Asian session and perhaps a fall of the pound in the European session. Looking at the aggregate figures, not only the last po opinion polls, the FTs, the Financial Times Brexit tracker, moved to uh, a lead for remain. 47 against 45. Uh, the poll of polls by uh, what UK thinks is a dead heat of 50-50. The number cruncher uh, politics, NCP, uh, shows um, higher chance of two thirds for remain. Okay, that's Matt Singh. And my personal opinion is we'll have a small victory for remain, 51 against 49. Okay. Uh, but you never know what's going to happen. So uh, currency impact, as I see it, a short-lived rally for remain. If it's if it's uh, if that's the result, if we do have a Brexit, it's less priced in. That means we'll have uh, a well a pound plunge, a clear fall, and then uh, also a big bounce because market moves can be crazy in such events. But then the direction is down. In general, what are we expecting? The um, in case of a remain, the pounds rise maybe to top 150, maybe even 152, and then gradually uh, settle down and uh, slide a bit, bit lower. Your dollar perhaps will have a break of 116.16, uh, 115 at least, and then, but watch 114.60 if we settle above this line, it's bullish for the euro under this line, it could be bearish. Um, so the euro follows the pound, okay? The yen goes in the other direction. The yen is a safe haven currency. If we have a vote to remain, we'll have one uh, the dollar yen rise, less demand for safe haven, and 105.50 is the line to watch. Again, 
if it settles below or above, followed by 106, 10, 107, 65. Dollar CAD, the levels to watch on the downside, 127.50, 126.30, and I would add 125. Aussie dollar, uh, 76, 77.40, 78.40 on the top side, and the Kiwi dollar could extend its gain, 72.50, 73, 75. Um, to the upside. Remember, uh, vote to remain is good for first and foremost the pound, then the euro, and then the other risk uh, currencies, the commodity currencies, the Canadian dollar, the Aussie dollar, and the New Zealand dollar. And of course, bad for the yen, perhaps also bad for the Swiss franc, but things are more complicated there. In case of a dramatic Brexit, the UK will not fall off a cliff, will not leave the EU immediately, but markets will react very, very quickly. Pound dollar, 130 is the first target before bounce to around 135, which was the post-crisis low of uh, 2009, okay? Um, so big crash, a big bounce, and then another gradual fall. Euro dollar could easily slip under 110, maybe 108.20, 107.10. If we have the very low level, maybe not in the immediate aftermath, aftermath but afterwards, is 104.60. Dollar yen could easily slip under 100. Um, and then the Bank of Japan could intervene in various ways to push it up, perhaps, probably without cooperation from others. Dollar CAD, 133.10, 135 are the levels on top. Aussie dollar, 71.40.70. And Kiwi could easily slip under 70 cents. Okay, uh, now the timetable in this wrap up in the in the video, uh, all the times are GMT. Okay, Greenwich Mean Time. So nine in GMT, ten in the UK, eleven here in the old continent. Polls close. We have election day polls, not to be confused with exit polls. That means it's a much more limited scale, but it could be significant and could be telling. It might also be very close, as Ramon says. Okay. At the same time, we may or may not have those exit polls on a wider scale, but commissioned by hedge funds. And it's unclear if these polls even exist uh, when the results or if the correct res results will reach market. And there will be uh, rumors about this and lots of action. So the big action begins at 9 GMT. But real results from the vote will have to wait another two, two and a half hours later. Uh, the first two counties to report, Wandsworth expected to show a lead for Maine, 70%, 70 to 30, and Sunderland, a small majority, smaller majority for leave. Um, if we have different results from these two counties, um, better than expected for Maine or better than expected for leave, we could have a big, big reaction. It's followed by the city of London, which is expected to support Remain, around two thirds. And then we'll have a flow of results from 12 GMT, midnight GMT to 3 GMT, okay? So uh, lots of data coming out. These are three bellwether areas which are expected to be finely balanced. If they're not finely balanced, uh, if they lean towards one side, it could be indicative of the wider UK vote. Rexham at one, carefully at 130, and Lancaster, perhaps the most important bellwether at two. By 3 GMT, we'll have 88 areas, additional ones reporting, and lots of data already out, and perhaps we'll have a projection by the BBC and other news organizations. They will call it, okay? If not, if it's too close, watch out for around 4 GMT, 90% of the areas will already have reported. And if we still don't have results, we'll have to wait until 6 GMT, more or less, for the last reports. Remember, the last ones are expected to be leaning more for leave, okay? And 7 GMT will be here with a new show uh, with uh, the EU referendum aftermath. I'll probably have red eyes, but I'll be here. I'll put all my alarm clocks. Oh, and I'm sure I'm gonna be sleeping at night. Anyway, this, is, um, this wraps up the wrap for uh, our special edition, the referendum, referendum, EU referendum in the UK, huge event for markets, a very nasty campaign, uh, big implications for all the world, big implications for markets. Uh, I don't think it's exaggerated, not overhyped. Um, 
again, asymmetrical risk. Markets lean towards remain, but um, every anything can happen. It's a very, very close uh, vote. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow at the same time with the aftermath. Um, remember to trade responsibly. Your broker will probably already limit you because of, uh, I mean, limit leverage. Uh, yeah. And, well, we have an, a new session coming up with Dr. Siverman. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. And see you tomorrow. Thank you and bye-bye.